Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Monday, June 17, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Isaiah chapter 1, reading verse 16 to 20. And it says, Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now and let us reason together, say the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If ye be willing and obedient, ye shall heed the good of the land. But if ye refuse and rebel, ye shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for your word this morning. And as we can see in this reading this morning, that this is a continuation from yesterday's reading. And remember yesterday I was saying that the Lord refused the worship and the sacrifices of Israel because of the things that they were doing. Now, in verse 16 to 20, we can see here, confirm what I was saying yesterday, that God is calling Israel back to repent. So if they want their worship to be accepted by God, they would have to do these things. They would have to repent and turn away from the evil that they were doing. And he lists something, of course. He says that what? They need to seek judgment. So it therefore means that Israel at some point was turning their eyes away from judgment and from justice. They were oppressing the people instead of relieving the oppressed. So they were doing the opposite of what they were supposed to be doing. And so here God is saying, based on the things that you guys are doing, I cannot, I cannot accept your worship because you are doing the very thing that I do not like. And so he invite them to come. And I love this part. So you see, all is not lost. But the invitation say, come. And it's up to you and I to accept or to refuse. He didn't force any of them. He's saying that you need to make the decision to change. I will provide the remedy for you. But you have to come and take the remedy. I will not force it on you. So, the choice is yours, is what he's saying. And so he gives the invitation, Come now, come now my children, come my friends, come let us reason together. Yes, you are filthy. Yes, you have sinned. You have turned away from my statue and my laws. You have broken my commandments, but all is not lost. Come, do your sins, they are red. Do your sins, they be like scarlet. They can be white as snow. Come, let me wash you. Wash you from all of this filthiness and give you my robe of righteousness. And I say, Amen. And he not only stopped there, he went on to say that if, so, if you are willing and obedient, I will make you eat the best of the land. I will make you stand tall among the nations. But if you refuse, you will surely be devoured by the sword. And what the, I say, it will and shall come to pass. So, the choice is yours. So, yes, <clears throat> the first couple of verses before this said that God will not accept any worship from Israel. Now we can see the reason why he will not. But 
he does not leave them without hope because God is not a God of hopelessness. But he has to call us out and our foolishness. He has to. And that is why I do not understand why someone who said that they care about you will see you making a fool of yourself, see you going down a wrong path, and they will not say anything to you. Yet still they say that they are your friends, or they care about you, or they love you. And I tell people that all the time. I say, look here, if you cannot tell me the truth, and if you cannot prevent me from destroying myself and give me guidance, you are not my friend. In fact, you are worse than my enemy because it therefore means that you don't care about my well-being. It is better you tell me the truth and I refuse to hear the truth rather than you never tell me at all when you could have maybe prevented me from destroying myself. And that is why it is so serious from my standpoint. We need to tell each other the truth. The Bible said that the Lord reproved those he loved. And so that is why he's drawing up Israel here. Because he loves them. And being the God that he is, he can't continue to indulge this wickedness and allow this wickedness to continue. He has to tell them to stop it and to change. And this seems to be a recurrent theme with Israel from day one. They have been like this. They rebel. God punish them. They decide, say, oh, they say that they're going to change. Then the next day, they gone back right to it again. And it's just keep repeating itself over and over. It's like a dance. A dance. But there must be a point when enough is enough. And trust me, that time will come. That time is come, but the good news is there's still hope now. Don't wait for that time when enough is enough. Because at that time, you won't be able to handle the wrath of God pouring out on you. And so friends, as I said yesterday and I say it again, let us turn away from those things that we are doing that is interfering with our experience with God so that our worship offering to, to Him is not defiled. So we don't end up offering corrupt worship, unsincere worship, abominable worship. Let's give God the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving and let us be humble about it and be reverent and also accept is transforming grace in our lives so that we can walk continually in his light and i say amen